I need to tell this from the start for it to make any sense. My mother, a kind elderly woman named Suzanne, has battled breast cancer for most of her life. Somehow, it keeps returning. She has beaten it five times, but no matter what she does, it always comes back. Doctors all across the country have been puzzled. My mom lives alone with just her and her three cats. My dad died many years back from leukemia. Since then, her house has mostly sat empty and dark. It's almost impossible for me to step into the house. I can't even imagine how it feels for her, but she doesn't have too much of a choice. Her only other option is a retirement home. It was two days ago when I received a call from her. I had been out of our small town for months on business. I had just finished work for the day when my phone rang. I pulled it out, surprised to see my mom calling me. Normally, she sends emails. She only calls for important things. I knew deep down, but I didn't want to believe. Hey, mom. I started, my voice beginning to break. Hi, sweetie. I took the blood tests. It's back. She began to cry, loud sobs that I could hear through the phone. I don't know if I can beat it. Will you come with me to the doctors? I immediately said yes. In almost two hours, I was on a plane headed back to our town. I landed at around 7.30 and got into town at 9. It was 9, 8 when I pulled into the garage. I stepped into the house, greeted immediately by a wave of nostalgia and happy memories. It was almost overpowering, but I knew I needed to push forward. I emerged from the foyer into a cozy living room. There were two small recliners, a couch, and a table. My mother laid down on the couch, fast asleep. I decided to join her. I grabbed a pillow and a spare blanket and laid down on the floor beside her. It took me a while to fall asleep. It was only when I heard her snores that I truly began to feel tired. The very next day, we went to the hospital. Normally, we go to the town's hospital. Today, I knew something was different. Deep down in my gut, something told me that I needed to go to the county hospital. So, I trusted my gut and changed the course. My mom complained for a little, then went with it and slept in the back seat of the car. When we arrived at the hospital, a towering pillar of glass, I picked my mom up and carried her inside. A woman with rimmed glasses sat at the reception desk. She peered up at us as I explained the situation. She told us to take a seat and a doctor would be right with us. Sure enough, a doctor soon was. His badge read Dr. Purge. He smiled and then herded us to a small clinic room. I don't remember all the details. Doctors came and went giving blood tests and at one point took Suzanne and left me alone to give her a round of chemo. It was then that I fell asleep. The events of the day and the day before had just taken its toll and I leaned back in my chair, drifting off. The first thing I noticed when I awoke was flashing lights. Red. Off. Red. Off. The pattern switched every few seconds. I rubbed my eyes making sure I was seeing correctly. The next thing I registered was a loud, booming klaxon that made my ears ring. Following that was a PA announcement. I heard what seemed to be a woman say, please remain in your rooms. This is not a drill. Please remain in your rooms. Fear gripped my heart, but it quickly was replaced by fear for my mom. What would happen to her? She was still somewhere else. I steadied myself. Assuming it was a gunman, I would probably be safe, right? I decided to take a risk. I stood up from my chair, tiptoed to the door, and cracked it just slightly. The hallway beyond was clean and pristine. I decided to go for it. The hallway was silent. 
The only thing I could hear was the klaxon every few minutes. My footsteps echoed off of the walls, stretching to infinity. I had no idea where I was going. I assumed that I needed to find a map, to then find stairs, and to then find my mom and leave. Again, I always trust a gut feeling. I turned a corner at the end of hall. Again, nothing. Except for a few red drops halfway down. I approached cautiously. As it got closer, I knew what it was. It was blood. But then again, that wasn't out of place for a hospital, was it? I kept going. I made a right. This time, there were more drops of blood. However, there was a map on the wall. I reached it, memorizing the path I needed to take. Left, right, left, left. Easy, right? Just then, I heard a noise. I looked around, trying to figure out where it came from, but it seemed to be coming from all directions. It sounded like footsteps. Suddenly, the footsteps got louder. I wheeled around to see Dr. Peard running dead at me. He screeched to a halt, grabbing my shoulders and shaking them frantically. Get back to your room. It's not safe. I can handle a gunman, I declared. No, you don't understand. This isn't a game, and it's not a gunman. Whatever it is, it got your mom. You need to run. He started to cry. I backed up. Slowly, his tears began to fall. Red tears, straight from his eyes. Red, blooded, teardrops. I turned around and sprinted. Behind me, I heard fast, frantic footsteps and crazed panting. I dashed a left, then barely hit a right. The plan had changed. If my mom truly had died, I needed to get out. Eventually, the footsteps died behind me. I was close to the elevator, and Dr. Peerge wasn't. After a few turns, they appeared. I pressed the call button. Nothing happened. I banged my fist against the wall. Of course it wouldn't work. Just perfect. I would have to take the stairs. Luckily, they were right there. I immediately began to rush down the cobblestone stairs, not stopping. Floor 5. Floor 4. Floor 3. Just as I passed Floor 3, I heard a chorus of laughter. It seemed like multiple voices coming from above and below. Whatever it was, it was approaching fast. I ducked out into Floor 3, then silently shut the door and turned around. Behind me was a line of dead patients. Their corpses rotted in a huge open room with benches and vending machines. They were laid side by side, making what looked like a checkerboard. Broken bones and random limbs were put on top, arranged to make letters. And in one second, I realized what was spelled. W-E-S-E-E-Y-O-U. I wheeled around determined to get back to the stairs. In the window of the stairwell, I saw Dr. Pierge. His face was locked in a manic grin, his hair sticking out everywhere. His face was smeared with blood. I screamed, and he began to open the door. I turned around and ran like my life depended on it. Ahead was a door reading S-E-C-U-R-I-T-Y. I slammed into limbs, but I didn't care. I rushed into the small security booth and locked the door. Almost instantly, I heard banging on the door and laughter. I looked around. There was a small table with a computer and a walkie-talkie. I went to the walkie-talkie first. There was static, then hissing, and then something spoke. It wasn't from the hospital. I recognized the voice as Dr. Greer of the town hospital. What was he doing on this channel? My name is Dr. Greer, he said shakily. Something is in our hospital. It's picking off patients one by one. I don't know what to. His voice was replaced by another, a woman's. Help, something broke into our hospital. We need immediate assistance. Again, 
Her voice was replaced by an old man's. Please, get us back up. There are people dying in our hospital. Finally, one last voice came on the radio. I gasped, recognizing it as my mother's. Please hear my message. My son, we see you in the security room. For your mother's sake, open the door. Open the door. O-P-E-N-T-H-E-D-O-O-R-N-O-W. O-P-E-N-T-H-E-D-O-O-R. O-P-E-N-T-H-E-D-O-R. O-P-E-N-T-A-D-O-O-A-R. She began repeating the one phrase as the banging grew louder. Ignoring it, I turned to the computer. Luckily, it had some service. I went to the one place I know of. I don't know if this will even go through, if this will even be posted, but I need help and I need it right now. I'm going to die here. Something is in this hospital. It appears to be affecting other hospitals in the area as well. This could be big if this spreads, but for now, get me help. 